God, that you bless your people. God, and help those that's going through troubled time, God, with fires. God, protect them, Lord, and through this hurricane. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, put your hands upon thy people. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
know that it's one of the things that God can only give to us. And uh, we were putting this together, the sermon. I presented it when I was done. I gave it to Desi. Desi then went and chose the different songs that we can come into some older ones. And knowing that God is God, the great big God, he watches over us. He brings to us where we can have these different things that only God can do. I've got three things I want to start today. And if we look at last week, we've seen the, the first blast of the trumpet of plagues. And they were going to shout those four of them. We looked in the word of God. At the same time, we have to go back and show you the last three. And that'll be in next week. And we get into that. There are different things that can be a blessing. And they'll give us an opportunity. So if you want one of these after service there, and I'll give this to him, okay? So let's look at here. Let's look at the words of God. And see what God can do. We're still trying to get to where we can got where people can hear what's going on. We have to order another one. I know that if that was unlocked, nobody came in to steal it. If they would have come in and stole it, that thing would have went off and that would have went off and we would have all heard that and different things like that. But it was that happened. So we need to get some different ways that we can do all that we can. Let's look at this thing that talks about a glance back to the future. It's a little bit going back and showing you the various things that can be able to be uh, given to us, some things that only he can give to us. And when he does that thing in our hearts and our lives, he does that to where that we can see that he's at work in us. And that's the most important thing that all of us have is to know that God is loving us and that we're part of it. And that we can understand that we're studying the book of Revelation and where God said some interruptions that led to the life-changing introductions. There's several things I want us to point out to you. This is that revelation is a prophecy where our family uh, world we're coming to uh, screeching halt and a whole new way of life over itself to us he tells us about there's a truth that we now have it's a truth that he's a brought it uh, he gave it to us he cleared us and the first thing if you look in chapter one the thing that stands up jesus is standing up and there was a man, his name is John. His one is the, wrote the book of John. He wrote first, second, and third at the same time. Each and every one of them were something that could be able to come forth into the ways that only he could do. But when he said that, he looked over at John. He's getting older in life. It's been some 30 years, 40 years since the time that Jesus had been crucified. And he did what he did in Acts chapter 1. But he comes now at this particular time. He's telling him to him, he says, write what I am saying. And Jesus was declaring it. And they were saying what was being said. And if I'm going to do that, he's going to have to tell me really good so I can know what I'm saying that he's saying so that we can all understand what God can do in our hearts and our life. And that's where we see the Apostle Paul. He's come to that point in his life. Unfortunately, he's got himself to where that at places that were happening in Rome and different things was getting rid of different people that were called Christians. And at this particular point, they were taking John, they're putting a picture that I showed you a picture on this here, in number five here. It was a wild in exile of an island of Patmos. It's outside of Turkey. It's outside of the things that you could see there. But it was in this process there 
that he was talking the glorious Jesus Christ, that Jesus was speaking to him in that place, and everything was going on at that time. So when we look at the next one, that John is giving a series of, of stunning vision that focuses on Christ, the church, and the future, for us, you and I, can accept it, and we can ignore the different things that might be out there that we're not sure what's going on. But it also leaves us this responsibility there. It's the explaining that was taking forth of the spiritual condition of this light. And there was these things that came out. First, it was past, it is present, and it is future. Whatever is coming forth, God's got something for you, for me, for all of us when we know that he begins to reveal those things inside of us. So when you look at these stock uh, futures that are going on and the things that went on the year of 2016, a lot of things had gone on in that particular time called America. But we see that, that there's a faith and the strength that the church, that God wants to come. He wants to do things in people's lives and the strength of the power of God. He saw that it was a it has is what he was saying to them. In other words, he was telling them, have confidence, have the ability to say, I can accept what God is doing. And if he did that, if he said it, then it will. He's going to come. He's going to do what he wants to do in all of our hearts, our lives, and our beings. But the fight is in this uh, gladiatorial event and things that were going on. Jesus was doing something, and John was the man that was on that particular picture I showed you where it was at Patmos was. And John had, on the other side at Patmos, was a safe place. It wasn't the little one that was out there. It happened to be there, but it was a place that they couldn't get away. It was a place that they could probably be hit by snarks and whatever else that could be there. But it was there at that time. That's where he was, a man that was in nowhere, a place that was hard to understand it and all the different things. Now, if we understand it, all you have to do is go down by San Francisco and you look out over in the deal and you'll see that particular page on number 11 there. You know what that one is. And that's a lot of people that were in jail there. And then if you look at the, how it is in the city, it turns around to us and all those things are there. But that's not what John was going through. John was going through a horrendous thing that was coming upon him. And he realized that God was trying to do something in his life. And there it was, that, that penal colony of Rome. And the times that even when Jesus was crucified and getting busy to come. But there was a guy that was Barabbas that turned around and got that death sentence to got him to where he can get away. And Jesus was then taken out, a man like Jesus, and he was taken out and he was crucified. It was a time. It was not like the life of an exile of Patmos. It was a one that he can give you to, and all of us, where that Jesus can just point out to us. And, and you know, if you would have been at the place and you were with Mary, you would listen to the different ones that were said there. If you'd see all the things that, that, that happened there. But you look at something was coming on in all their lives and their place in this point that this kind of island there was one where Jesus Christ and what he wanted to do. And John now, he comes all together. He was there with the mother. He was taking care of them. All the different things. Even Jesus asked him and called out to John and all the things that were going on. But it came to that point, this is where he's at in his life. And it appears that John, it said in Revelation 1.19, it said, write the things which you've seen, the things which you are, and the things which will take place after these things. And somehow John was now become the seer. He's the one that knew what God can do and what God wants to do. Does God know that kind of stuff about us where he can see inside of us? and what we have, and what God is doing in our hearts and in our lives. But we see the strength. It was called a church. And in the church, he came to the point that he brought prophecies. He gave to us to the point the strength of the faith. 
And it was at that Patmos that John received this uh, upacalyptic, I can't even read that word right now, but it's unveiling, it's revelation, it's understanding that that which was the past is something that was the first. It's the, all the things that God said, I'm trying to give it to you. And that's what John was getting right now. He didn't know what those words were, but he wrote them down because he knew other people's had to. And I can see him turning around to you and I, if he ever saw us, he would look right at us and says, I know this, Reuben, I can give this to you. That's what he would have said to you and I inside this church. When God wants to do all these things <coughs> that only God can do, and he comes into our lives because now he's the rule, the reign. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's over all things, Jesus is, at this time. In Romans chapter 18, I said, in my opinions, whatever we may have to go through now is less than nothing compared with the magnificent future God has planned for us. The whole creation is on tiptoes to see the wonderful sights of the sons of God coming into their own. The word of creation cannot as yet see reality, not because it closes to be blind, but because in God's purpose it has also been so limited, yet it's been giving us the greatest thing called hope. Hope. Hope that he's given to us. In Romans 8, verse 21, it says, The hope that is in the end, the whole created life will be rescued from the tyranny of change and decay and have its share in that magnificent liberty which can only belong to the children of God. It is plain to anyone with eyes to see that at the same time all created groans in a sort of a universal travail. Verse 23, and it's plain that we have a foretaste of the Spirit, just like John was on that island. And they're in that state of a painful tension, and where we see the redemption of our bodies, which it means at the last, we re realize the full sonship in Him. It was that time that suddenly John knew who Jesus was. But suddenly... It done something to him in a place, in a bad place. But it was in that place he realized that somehow he was turning it over to God. And in verse 24, he said, we were saved by this hope. But in our moment of impatience, let us remember that hope away means waiting for something that we haven't yet got. But it's my hope for something we cannot see. And then we must settle down to wait for it in patience and say, God, I'm believing, I'm trusting, I know, I see the miracles that only God can do. So what does he do in our lives? We see that there's three things. There needs to be that past. It means that you may have to lift behind something. It means that the present is there and you ought to have the life that you now have. The future comes to us to the point that we know that we have lived. We've looked before John's life. We looked at John's world. We looked at his future that was coming upon him. He had literally, according to history, is that they boiled him in oil and burned his body. That's where he was on that place. He was personally came to come to bring things upon him. But he looked. He heard Jesus, and I want to tell you, no matter how burned you are and what you look like, you ought to know this, Jesus is there. And we need that in our hearts, in our lives. And the Bible comes into our lives, and that's why it's said there in Revelation 119. He said, write the things which you have, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after these things. He wants to come these things in our lives, and that's what he does in our hearts and our life. And that brings us to this first thing. It's a point that we need to be able to be able to see, that we can see Jesus. We can feel him. We can know what he's done. We've seen what he's done at our altars and in our prayers. He's came in our hearts and our lives. Every one of you have came to that point. 
Desi worked hard to put songs together to go with this song, and they were good songs. They told us that, and that was to tell us where that we can trust Jesus Christ. And the Lord, and he's, Jesus is high, he's lifted up. John saw the, the throne of the Father. He saw the beginning of revelations of the myriads of angels. But then, John, in your deal there, you see a point in there where it says in red, there's a glance back to the future when it says, describe how Christ is portrayed. I want you to leave it to you to write in your hearts. I want you to look in your life what it means in Revelations 1 and verse 5 and through 7. Or look at 1 through 13 through 16 or 1 and 17 to 18. What was John's response when he knew then that God was talking to him? I don't know. There's a lot of things I'd like to get to tell you, everything I can tell you about. But sometimes I don't know how to say it sometimes. But when God comes in, he comes in with our hearts and with the reaching for us. And he's promised his return. And he knows that he's John there. His death was going to come a day, someday. But it came to that point he had to come to that. And John is then directed to observe. Number two there is that Jesus writes uh, where the things which are the church. You know, it's weak. It's down. But I've seen the numbers that are going up and up every week in our sermons. There's, you'd, be, you'd be surprised if I showed you. All I can just do is say, this is what they did. They wrote it down, and this is what it is. God can do what he wants to do. So don't worry about it. Just You need to just know that God is always going to be there. And the things that are there, God is in control. I want you to look back a little bit. We did this in different places in the, in the last few months and years. Uh, some of this has. But we see that picture there of Asia. And you see where they're talking about these seven churches that got involved in that. There's Ephesus, the Smithes, and then you see Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, uh, here, here. Uh, Laodicea and Philadelphia and Col Colossa. Okay, we've seen those things. We're all getting in there. And all of them had bad things. And here's what happened. Two of the churches, number five and number seven that you see up there, are uh, called to repent. In verses two and uh, number six, Philadelphia, they were just re doing everything they do to glow with praise before him. But the other three were number one, Ephesus, Mergamon, and Thyatira. They are mixed people, and they had things all messed up. God, don't accept it that you're having a bad day. You may have had some sorrow moments, but you can trust God that our God is an exist. He works for us. He cares for us. And that's where it showed there that he tells us to remove lampstands to Ephesus. He tells them, I'll make war against them in Pergamon. He said, I'll give her time to repent in Thyatira. You will not know the hour when I come in Sardis, and I will split, I don't like this, I will spit you out of your, my mouth and lay it to see it, is what it said there. It came to that point that God comes to us, and so John is at it. And that now shows John when he does this, he comes to that third thing that's in there, is that the first thing was uh, words of Jesus. The second was the, was the uh, churches there. And the thing is there, that he said this. You got the church, you got Jesus. What do you got is the third thing. You got the future. You've got the future. Hold your heads up. Stand up. Know that our God is always there. The things will take place, is what it said in chapter 4. And that's what it takes in our lives. He said, after these things, I looked and behold. This is John. He's a dweller. He's on this place, on a bad place. He's a dower, a door standing open in heaven. He sees that there's a rapture of the church. He saw the first voice which I've heard. He's seen the sound of the trumpet speaking with me, said, Come her, 
here, and I will show you what must take away after these things. And things have begun to change inside of him. When you look at this, he was looking down from the world, and he could see the gates. He could see the things that were going on. He'd heard the words of Jesus. He'd even begin to, at the time, he could see the ideas of all the things that were going to come unto this. And we know that he was crying out to him, come unto me. And he's telling him even at that time, and he comes in our hearts. He comes into ours that we can hold on to. And we know that there's that, that, that judgment, but we know that it's symbolized by what God could do with us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it said, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on a throne a book written inside, and on the back sealed up with seven seals, and I saw a strong angel pro uh, proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals. In verses 3, he continues on, he said, and no one in heaven or in the earth or under the earth has able to open the book or to look into it. Then I began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the book or look into it. And one of the elders said to me, stop weeping. Behold, the lion is from the tribe of Judah. The root of David has overcome so as open the book and seven seals. Jesus now has come in. He's now to us that John had to say, he's the redeemer. I can believe in what he can do. And he brings that into our lives. We may see the words that we can call him the Lamb of God. We can call him the Messiah. We can call him the Holy One. We can look throughout the Bible and it tells us time and time again that he steps the steps of the scenes. He comes to the point that he holds us the scrolls. And then in verse 9 of that it says this, and they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals. Suddenly, God God is telling you, can you accept it? Can you receive it? Can you allow it to come into your lives? And that's where those seven seals come in. In Revelation chapter 6 is through chapter 8. It talks about those seven seals and all the different things that were coming upon those that were them around them. But at the same time, you understand that it's not just mankind. It could be a born again. It could be a child of God. It could be someone that trusts in what God can do in their life. And God begins to move in our lives. And so then the, the seals have revealed and the things have come. We've seen where the scrolls, we've seen the different things that were we didn't know, un understand them. But in all of the things that was going on, there was a wrath of Satan that would come there. But I want to tell you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. He tells you that he can give us all the things if we believe that he will come and pause. He'll stalk us up. He'll bring us to the point that we're prepared. All the words that start coming up are not little bunch of people that were scaredy cats and everything like that. It's one that could turn around and say, I know my Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I, I know that he's going to be there. And so that trumpet blast results the damages against the earth. And Satan is going to get what he wants. I'm telling you that. And it's going to come to a bad day of abyss and things are going to come upon them. It talks about the woes, the woes with demons and with death and with defiances. But there's another inner clue that comes in. We understand that there were angels that are in the book of Revelation. They too are in there. It's a wonderful time. It's the angels that are upon this earth, a voice in the heavens of those that are hearing them. We see the future of what's going to come. We understand there's 1,260 days performing miracles of mankind to a time of conversions for some, but then we see that seventh trumpet blast. In the announcement of that Christ reign, something begins to take place. And let's look at Revelation 13, verses 1 through 10, but it starts and says, the Antichrist, the beast of the sea, scans mankind, economy, sweeping the earth, 
the Antichrist, the immoralities. Even gets into chapter 13, verse 11, it talks about the beast out of the earth. You also see that there's a dragon at Satan. And then you see seven bowls in verse six, uh, chapter 16. You see the trumpet judgments. You see the, bow, the bowels judgments that are going to come up soon and we'll be going with them. But we look at different things. We say to ourselves, what are we going to do? And we see life has got all sorts of different things in it. It's wondering what can I do and what is going to happen inside of me. And sometimes we're looking at the ideas of the raptures. We talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. We get excited about it. We talk about caught up in him. We talk about what's going to do. But my friends, I want to tell you, there's one in there that's out there. It's called the Battle of Armageddon. It will be there. It's going to be a time. But you know what? There's something about what God lifts us up to and what he wants to do in our hearts and our lives. It's a little, little illustration I use, and it's a little bit hard. And you got old Lucy said, uh, boys, look at it, rain. What if it floods the whole world? Then it turns around, and you got old Lin Lin Linus said, it will never do that in the ninth chapter of Genesis. God provides Noah that would uh, never happen again. And the sign of the promise of the rainbow, Lewis, Lucy came up. You've taken a great load off my mind. Then we find our little Linus, Linus turn around and said, sound uh, technically as a way of doing that. I use that as a dumb way, but that's the way sometimes we just put it together. And all we have to do is, I am the one that got saved in this church. It was mine in this church that I began to pastor many years ago. What I want to say this is that God takes you no matter who you are, what you are. God comes around. He does what he wants to do. He says here this promise to John in John 19, verse 11. He said, and I saw heaven open. He's talking about these dimensions that were there in his future that was possible. He came to a point that he's looking at the strength that only God can give to him. And then he said, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called faithful and true. In righteousness, he judges and wages war. It's nothing else but our Lord, our God. And son. His eyes are flames of fire, and on his head are many diadems, crowns, and he has given a names written on him, but he also knows accepts himself. Verse 13, he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Verse 14, and the armies are in heaven, clothing in fine linens, white and clean. We're following him on white horses. Verse 13, uh, 15 here. He says, for his mouth was come to a sharp sword, and that it he may uh, strike down at the nations. He will rule them with a rod of an iron. He, he treads the, the wine press of the fierce wrath of God, the mighty, almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I want to tell you that this is the thing, what he saw in Jerusalem when he was crucified, that was another day. But I want to tell you, there's a day, a true day, a day that God is telling us, I am going to get, he's going to take it, he's going to be the one, he's going to be in over all the things. Why? It's because he is the King of Kings. And he is the Lord of lords. So we look at ourselves. The sweep of the war, sword and difference are there. In Roman, in Revelation 19, verse 20. And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet, who performed the signs in his presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. 
These two are thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with flames. And then, you know, you are not beat up no more at one point. And it's at that one point, they're doing all they can against you and anything around the world. I want to tell you this. There's a God that's reaching out for us. He cares for us. He brings us to a point to where that he can pour it out upon us. And it turns us that he is now rose up in something that we did not know. We know that he's the king of kings and lord of lords, but I want to tell you, he's the righteous judge. You've got to take that good one. Man. That's a good one that keeps me. It's the one that says I don't have to worry about the bad things. I can trust God, and I can go to him. There's two things I want to share you with there, is that uh, take this opportunity to look back on the debt Christ paid for our sins, but also take time to look at your current relationship with Christ and his church. But the biggest one is this. He tells us, look ahead to Christ's second coming. What does it have in store for you? And suddenly, what's he saying? You know, you're going to go to school soon. You're going to have to go to different works. You're going to have to do different things to make it to where you can live. But I want to tell you, there's something that's greater as he that is in you. He comes into us. And he did what I could not do. It was impossible for me to do. But he did it for me. He cared for me. He looked ahead in First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. Wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. That is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. In, uh, in, in verse 9 of chapter 5 through 11, it says, For God has not disdained us for the wrath, but for the obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. He says in this, Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another. That means the one next to you. Look at him right now. Can you look at them? Okay, I want you to get in another. You know what another is. Just as you are doing, you're coming to a point that you can trust God. And that's what this is all about. It's just going back because I got to come to the point where we get in the bowls and we got to finish those other three trumpets and different things. But they're going to come in very hardly. But that world is going to be beaten. It's going to come to a point that Satan is trying to do even you. But you can trust in God that our God is able to do all things if we'll trust in him. Amen. So what we look at it, what have you done? You know, there's a great big God. Praise the Lord. Can you turn me off? I'm going to tell you, 